This panel here today is a part of the Ahalo Aina, which is a hui, a coalition of independence groups, organizers, individuals, and those who love the land, who are supporting all of the different parts of the Kino of our nation, because it's not just one part. Yeah, you don't have just the Kalaimoku and the governance. You don't just have the Nakoa. You also have the Lavai'a, the Mahi'ai. You have the Manovai. Those connect to all of us, to the, the, the weaving the stories together. You have the Kuhuno who educate. But then you have all of those who, who defend each other, yeah? And you have the Po'o, which is always the Aina. And so this part of this particular panel is to honor the Mahi'ai Lavai'a component of our Lahui. And the thing about it is, like I mentioned at the main stage, the reason why we talk about food sovereignty and the criminalization of culture is that we talk about food sovereignty and food security all the time. But, and sometimes what they do is they focus in on the Kanaka and say, how come you're not doing that? Why aren't you doing better? Why are you poor? Why are you suffering? Why are you challenged? And the reason why is because systems of exploitation and extraction are incompatible with systems of sustainability. So when they ask, how, why are people not doing so well? It's because it's not that people aren't doing the good work. It's that when they do the good work, it's often criminalized. It's often made to be something that is portrayed as evil, destructive, when really what it is, is its true sustainability. So I'd like to start off with our first speaker, Kiala Lopez represents one of the Opio from Kauai. And right now, Kauai is doing some amazing work right now. You have a lot of Kua'aina young people there, including at Coco Palms and Wainiha, who are reclaiming traditional Kuleana lands. And over the past few months, what has happened is, there have been two series of arrests, one at Coco Palms and one at Wainiha, where people are trying to protect their traditional lands. So I'd like to welcome one of our new young rising leaders, people who are raised in the charter schools, yeah. people who know our Olelo, and who are leading the way. Ekomo Mai, I want you guys to pa'i pa'i lima and welcome Keala to the, to the stage. Mahalo nui anti kalama. Aloha mai kako o Keala Lopez ko uinoa ahe kia iau. No ka aina, no ka vai, no haloa, no na kupuna, au makua, amena uhane, uhane no hoi. Ahe kia i o ke aloha au. No kua i mai au, he mokupuni o pio, maka mo oku au hau o ka poe hawaii. Ahe hiapo no hoi, no ka honua holo o koa. Mai ia moku, he apana aina li'i li'i, kapa ia o kai li'i, koke ahu pua'a o wainiha. Aloha everyone, Felina mai. My name is Keala Lopez, and I am a protector for the land, for the water, for Haloa, our grandparents, our ancestors, and for the spirits. I am a voice and guardian of Aloha. Yeah. Hey Mahalo. I come from Kauai, a young island in the genealogy of our people, yet an older sibling to the rest of the world. On this island lies a small section of Lo'i, Alaloa, and a resting place for Ivikupuna in an area called Kailili of the Ahupua'a o Wainiha. I ka'u ho ea ana i laila, i ke pono vau, he aina kupaya naha no. E ha mahina aku nei, ua ho una ia, makahi o kanakolu kanalima mau makai, a he swat team no ho'i, e ho o hopu ai ina kia i no ia vahi. Vahi a lākau o ke kumu no ke ia, o ia no ke komo hewa ana ma ka aina a ke kahi poe e a e. So four months ago, on April 4th, about 30 to 50 police and SWAT team members were dispatched to arrest the protectors of this area for trespassing. Four young men were arrested on various charges and have di been disputing the jurisdiction of the arrest ever since. Hewa loa ke ia. Maka ike Hawaii, makama ko mo oku auhau, he ohana no ka aina, a he hiapo no ke kalo ya kako. 
Ina aole e malama oe ya halua ke keiki mua a ke akua e malama ana ka ina ya oe. Pela ane ke ola pono. This is very wrong. By our mo'oku ohau, the aina is our family. The kalo is our el eldest sibling. If you take care of Haloa, the first child of the gods, he will take care of you. That is the foundation of Pono and Aloha. Ke no noe ha'aha'ane au ya oko e kuokua me ka ho'oponopono pono ia ana i ke ia heva. A ohe hana nui ke alu ia. E awamo kako i ke kule ana a, ke, a e kako o ke kahi i ke kahi e kulea i kanu'u. I humbly ask all of you today to help us restore Pono to these wrongdoings. No task is too great when all hands work together. Let's take on the responsibility to support each other to strive to the highest peaks, as our kupuna all say. I encourage you all to put out a kahea to your friends, families, strangers, politicians, and your community to take a stand with Aloha Aina, not just for Mana Wainiha, but for Aloha Aina in general, for all of our brothers and sisters. Call your mayor, call the mayor of Kauai, the governor, and representatives in Congress. Let them know the importance and necessity of Aloha Aina, like what we are doing in Wainiha, so that they may strengthen and we may strengthen our Lahui. E mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. E o Hawaii. And for those of you who want to look, I'm going to post later on the video of the rest up on the um, the event the event invitation on Ahalho Aina. And so if you go there, um, you can see what had actually happened four months ago. And after this, after everybody has a chance to speak, they're going to open it up for some discussion. So if anybody wants to ask questions about the people who and the struggles that they have, we need to kuka. This is what it is, kuka kuka. So mahalo nui. Mahalo Kiala. The next amazing, amazing person I'd like to bring to the to speak at right now at the panel is Twinkle Borges. And yes, Pai Pai Lima. Woo! For those of you, I'm sure many of you know of the amazing work she is doing at Pu'ohonua Owai'enai. For those of you who don't know, she has become the head of this wonderful, wonderful community. And they have not only taken care of their own, but they have done like uh, uh, drives to help support others, other young kids and students elsewhere. And they actually are creating, providing resources for students who are suffering elsewhere as well. They take care of their own, not only their own, but others as well. And coming back to the whole idea of criminalization of culture, we have Ke'ala, we have talking about Molokai, about recent arrests, but we must never forget that every day there are houseless Kanaka Maoli who are harassed and arrested on a regular basis, that they have nowhere to go. They have taken so many of our pu'ohonua, so many of our sanctuaries, and they have criminalized every single day. Those are considered houseless. So, in honor of that, in honor of, of, of what she's doing, feeding the people, taking care of the people, I wanted to invite Twinkle Borges for the fight that she does every day for years and supporting the most vulnerable among us. Ikomo mai, mahalo nui. Aloha, you guys. Thank you for having us. Um, no mai, me, a little bit nervous. But every day now, Puhonua, yeah, um, the state meets up with us every two weeks to check our census to see if my numbers came up. My question to them was, how can I turn away someone, you know, without giving them some place to rest their head, helping them get up, helping them get to the next level in their life? Um, so usually they threaten not only me, my son, that if we take in any more people, they will shut our whole place down. Um... My thing is looking at my kids. Yeah, I had kids, I have kids that came from dysfunctional homes, um, also from from outside of our community that comes and stay with me. In my household, I have 16. I feed about 27 kids. Among the 27 kids, I take care of 40, um, 40 kapunas too, making sure that they have something on their plate. Um, for somebody who does not have much, only Akua knows, you know, there is days where I open that ice box, there's nothing. Someone always come amazing. 
Um, we've been planting lois and um, laupeles and um, ulu trees in our place. State had asked us to stop. I was like, how come? I don't understand. This is our, our way of putting food on our table. Um, there is a lot of things that we are going through. And as we go through it, I keep my head up. You know, I do call certain people for keeping me into prayer because the task is not easy. I don't only help outside um, in a Wainai area. I do help in a Kakako area. I do help an orphanage out in Africa that I send donations to to help them on their feet. But I also do help out one um, area up in Maui, you know, for clothing, um, school supplies. Someone just, if they needed one hand up, I would be right there, you know. This is our people. I watch them every day walking the streets. You know, and I was once like them. You know, it's not easy where we are. It's real. The state know that if we come together as one, we're more powerful than them. I own. And that's how I feel. You know, they try to keep the pieces apart so we don't become as one. But we, we got to. We got to unite as one. You know. Twinkle never thinks about herself. Everybody else come first before her. My kids will tell you that. Um, right now, the only thing we're battling with the state is land. You know, we're homeless in our own homes. This is our land. You know, we choose how we live. My thing is if they were to come, because they've been threatening me that within the year they want to come, come in and do a sweep. My plan is, God, give me a bigger place. I don't only want to help 300, I want to help 3,000. I want to help the whole island to get to the next level, to get to wherever they need to get to. But I want to be that person with everybody else's help to help them, you know. They know the answer lies within us. They do know that. Sorry, no. I didn't get in touch. You got you, sister. Yeah. We got yeah. you. We got yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody. <laughs> so I want everybody to keep an eye on Pu'ohono Owa'inai because who knows when this kahea is going to come out for help from the peoples. So keep an eye on Twinkle. She's doing some amazing work. Her son over there, Kako'o Loa, my Ka'i Nui Loa over there. They're doing amazing work. And part of the uniting factor about all of these is when we talk about food sovereignty, the reason why we talk about food sovereignty is because all of these people are feeding their community. Manawainiha. What they're doing is like Namahoy, the Va'a Namahoy. You guys, who's who Namahoy? Namahoy, Ohana. Woo! Over here, Kauai represent. Wainiha feeds the Va'a. Twinkle over here feeds her community. They're trying to raise and plant hard to grow ulu plants. Yeah, if you know, you're not allowed to stay if they try to move you from place to place to place. How, how are you going to be self sustainable, right? And then, of course, we have our amazing Hano Hano Naihu over here. Do we need any further introduction for this amazing man who is an artist, who's a warrior, who is a hunter, who's a father? <laughs> they are over there and Molokai holding it down. Molokai is one of the few places where you can actually live off the land. And it comes... There's so many places, the runoff, the non-point source pollution, all oh, the lepo, the diversion of, the, of the, uh, the streams. You cannot live off the land. And Molokai, the warriors over there, the Lavai, uh, the Kia'i are protecting it. And it's like that, not by accident. It's like that, not because it's easy. It's like that because people have defended the Aina. So I'd like to bring right now to the panel, Hano Hano Naihu. Pai Pai Lima. Mahalo to um, all the kupuna, um, to this aina. Um, again, I'm confident, I'm not lacking humbleness, 
uh, lacking sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm Kaminaihu's brother. Um, I'm. My name is Hano Hano Naihu from the island of Molokai. Kanaka by blood, uh, Hawaiian by nationality, uh, Kia Iloko um, by profession, Aloha Aina by choice. Um, I'm a husband um, to Tanya Mailelani Naehu, Pocho Rican, you know, I call him Pocho Rican, um, French, um, beautiful, amazing, and I father to three kids. My son just graduated, um, Sebastian Kahale Ramos Naehu, valedictorian. I just didn't change my resume. Father of a valedictorian. <laughs> what do you mean? That's Aloha um, Native Intelligence Match Academia. It's a new me. So, um, Punika Mauli o Molokai. They say there's a fire that sit in every Molokai person's now and belly. Um, if you go back to Auntie Harriet Ne, it's the light carriers. Um, you go back to the Vakaiko, Molokai, Kapule O'o, um, island of this powerful prayer. Prayer so powerful can break rocks. Prayer so powerful uh, kill an invasion. Left Kaikololani, Kaikololani to go back home and to tell of this protective prayer. Um, when Reverend Adam Pali, right before the overthrowing happened, was on Molokai, and the, the evil dudes was asking him, who is willing to um, annex the queen for the, for the church? He said, oh, only get seven people on the island that would be interested in this. Other than that, everybody else is loyal to the queen. Somehow, something happened between then and now. And everything got flipped. To find Aloha Aina and kingdom on Molokai right now is very difficult. Um, what I know I know like do is talk about blame. When we talk about our environment, when we talk about the lessons that have been learned from the mistakes and the successes, we look at how we can make tomorrow better. Because if we was looking for blame, everybody is guilty. My family, your family, this Honolulu family, that Kauai family, that Molokai family, we all guilty. You ask the kids, who you know put stuff back in the aina? My kids raise their hand. We never believe 17 years ago when Walter said, if you guys are not going to go to college, you better master the rocks and the sticks and the springs and everything else because your generation will flock to the colleges and they can become everything we need. And we might forget how to work with the elements. So if you're too stupid because not going to college, you better master your environment. So Kiavanui right now has been our walk for our talk, right? Oh, I walk in like when gangsta hip hop Hawaiian artists nowadays. Why? Because I was riding shotgun to General Wall. You know, to Yoda himself. Oh, to really? You know, we stay in a rebel camp. Molokai is rebel headquarters. Um, Kavanui is rebel headquarters. It's the fully functioning Hawaiian fish pond. And by prophecy, once we put these back, we're supposed to go get back our place. And again, the only way we can go home to the kingdom is all together. Nobody can go home alone. So what we gonna learn? Two, one uncle, Uncle Robin, Durua, and Kumu Kapuni, heroes in my book. They stay in jail right now. Kumu gave a young family. His oldest daughter is classmates with my youngest daughter. They go Kulakai Puni. We just had an art camp. Was doing hip hop with him, and she said, uh, "My name is Hilai, and I like know if my daddy still love me." And I said, "No, nothing the wrong. What's wrong with you? Got my name is Hilai. I love my daddy, and my daddy love me. Right? Perspective and story. So if I come in over here, Uncle Robin, he's a warrior. He gonna handle his six months. 
Well, we didn't learn. He cannot jump on a boat and, and bust the guy up. Did he do that? No. What you can do and cannot do? Well, really, the society and the reality we live in right now, everybody's so scared, I cannot even make them flinch. Why? They're going to shoot gun. Boom. Right? So I got to use my leo. I got to use the law. I got to use my intellect. I got to use my wit. Right? Because we cannot go jail. That's the bottom line. Well, what we got to do? Well, the day of ignorance is over. All of us got to be smart. All of us got to help each other. If you don't know that the North Shore of Molokai is kapu, is sacred, and you're not supposed to be there, then you want dummy. I'm sorry, but you want dummy. And it doesn't matter if you want Hawaiian dummy, want Filipino dummy, want Haole dummy, no matter. What are we doing? We're trying to protect our environment for the generations to come. We're trying for say no to selling shared resources, right? If all of the fish is ours, just like the kalo, that's like shared stock in something. If somebody making money, you got to owe everybody something. And if you cannot, then no sell. And that's what lead me to some kanaka getting um, misunderstood that when fish pond is when conservation zone with porno practices included. What does that mean? If you want help and get extra, you can take. If not, if you take from some place where you never put in and you never ask, you're stealing. And we get these places like on Loko Ia and like these conservation zones that nobody's saying if you're doing porno, you cannot go eat. What we're saying is the days of selling our shared resources is over. Right? So when they say it's a fishing ban, it's not a fishing ban. It's a commercial fishing ban. Right? Because why? Because we like save them. Fishes, hand size, 100 babies. Elbow, 1,000 babies. Armpit, millions of babies. We got to get the millions of babies for be spawned I can take all the smaller ones, but regenerate our ahupua. That's what we do at Kiawanui. So me, the lessons that we learn is the ocean is not doing good. We take in too much fish. We being excessive. We're not living sustainable. Take one and salt one. That's all you need. Um, luckily for me, uh, instead of scolding the gener my generation or older, which is rude and obnoxious, and I'm sorry. I always like to tell the, our, our elders, thank you for getting us this far, and I'm sorry for everything else. <laughs> we got to do what we got to do for save them for Ilikea and the next generations. So me, I'm going to take these porno practices in with these conservation zones that can protect our aina and ocean for the generations to come. Are you afraid that you cannot go eat? I am never afraid because I am not a dummy. When I need to go get food, I know how to get, I know when to get, and that's all I'm going to take is what I'm going to eat. So if we all live like that, we can get back to a healthy environment. We can all kokua each other. We all can eat ripe, ono, mature, good stuff. Every day can get better, no have to get worse. So, I don't like monologuing too much. I love to do gangster rap. Called my conservation song, called Guardians. I don't know my sound, man. Right there, boo. By prophecy, the warrior is going to appear. And we need each and every one of you for you guys. Pacific Ocean is where we come from. All one people under the sun together as one. Time to stand and fight for all. Not just some, not run or succumb to the dumb ones. 
No offense, cause we're not trying to make trouble. But what you said you're taking is really more like double. Environment in rubble, tipping point is on the bubble. Fish you rustle when the politicians Cinema. you hustle. Our feathers get ruffled when our cries get muffled. We all struggle while you cuddle and snuggle. When you smuggle, you laugh at us and chuckle. Taking what you like, flexing military muscle. But your reality is truly insanity. An epic tragedy for all of humanity. Ironically, you fail to see that for family, we will fight to protect this world for eternity. New generation guardian standing right here. All the children of Moana Nui Akea. Papa Earth Mother Wakea Sky Father. Pacific Ocean Sisters and Brothers. E iho ano luna e. E pi ano la lo e. Hui ano no no. E bu. Make them off. Kanaloa, Tangaroa, our ocean way more than what you know from the surface to floor. Because when you open our native doors, it is secrets that lie in the myths, legends and lore. And at the core of what we need to restore is being sustainable and not needing the store. We are the natives of these lands. Hear us roar, the raping of resources over. Cinema. Say no more. Tell that greedy dummy we're laughing because it's funny. When you realize you cannot eat the money, your need for greed and your consumption Causing the food chain to malfunction A system broken because of your corruption Feces destruction on your instruction Causing us to have a spiritual eruption Gotta fight now before they leave us with nothing New generation's guardian standing right here All the children of Moana Nui Akea Papa Earth Mother Wakea Sky Father Pacific Ocean Sisters and Brothers E iho ano luna e E pi ano la lo e Hui ano na mo ku e Ku ano kapaya Somewhere a mother is crying The ocean is dying And the politicians outright lying Greed intensifying Please stop denying Debt rising, poverty multiplying. Over and over again, I'm reciting. A pledge to protect what we love till the day I'm dying. Let's fight, brain to brain, no biting. Silly Viking, Lua is counterfeiting, striking. New generation guardian standing right here. All the children of Moana Nui Akea. Papa Earth Mother Wakea Sky Father. Pacific Ocean, sisters and brothers. E iho ano luna e, e pi ano la lo e, hui ano na mo ku e, ku ano kapaya. The answer is we need to win the next three generations. Kalamai, but our generation and the ones older, if they're gone, they're gone. It's like a fish pond with the mud and the walls is six feet under. If we use all our energy for trying to dig out the mud and just for uncover the, the rock wall, we're not going to have en enough energy for make sure the walls that stay up no fall down. So me, Kalamai, but I'm going to focus our energy on the next three generations and we got to become the better storytellers than our evil counterparts. Hindsight 2020. We saw, we know what went happen. We got to deal with them. Chaos is not our friend. Chaos is the military's friend, right? Transition, if not smoothly, will not never happen at all. What we got to do is educate, right? The smarter our kids get, the better for the planet. Because smart people wouldn't agree to becoming slaves. And if somehow they find out they're slaves, they rebel out like us and misbehave. That's what we in. We got to redefine everything they said about us. We got to become the peacemakers as well as the guardians. Yeah? The guardian mask and the daddy mommy mask, that's the, that's the same face. But know when you got to fight for love. And right now... You know, we should do a little bit more than just praying. Everybody should come together more. And our, our generation got to show the kids how we all can cruise together, how we can work together, how we can aloha each other. We got to. 
We wasn't shown that. That's why I always say thank you and I'm sorry to the generation above. I don't like talk smack. I don't mean to. We just got to learn and we got to make adjustments, right? But thank you to our kupuna makua. Thank you, everybody who aloha. And if you like help, um, educate as much people that, you know, everybody. It's not a Hawaiian thing. It's an optimal human being thing. My wife keeps telling me that. Oh, babe, not just Hawaiian. You can't rap about anything else but Hawaiian. <laughs> babe, rapping period is hard. <laughs> she said, babe, it's a human thing. So if you talk about the optimal human, like the best human, oh, because you're talking about my kupuna. Okay, we're going to talk optimal human then. In turn, you're talking about us. So, aloha. Mahalo, you guys. Nui. That was amazing. And this, I think, for those of you, who I, I also on the event site, I have, uh, if you go to Ahalo Aina during the events, you can see the article that talks about what happened in Molokai. And for those of you who don't know, a few years ago, there were, uh, there were fishermen that came to Molokai, to this place in North Molokai, that traditional fishermen protected and then what they did is they stopped them from overfishing the area and right now two of them have been charged and found guilty are now are now serving six months in jail so that's the, the history um, the the guy who responsible for putting the two guys behind jail it's not a personal vendetta on him it's a wake up for everybody to realize what would happen no comment take from one place you're not supposed to and even for Molokai, it's you get Hawaiians who holding up the law process in making on bag limit. So we get greedy Hawaiians on Molokai that still like sell fish and would rather compete and just say, leave them wide open. Anybody can come. The day of the days of ignorance is, is over. That's the okole end of the old era. We, we got to go on the front end of the new one. We got to aloha each other and think about the seven generations to follow. So again, yeah, that, that, that Pilau Dentist, minor. If that guy can be why we all talk about him, and yeah, if you know guys going to Molokai for escort canoes, um, before we was on the shore loaded with high-powered sniper rifles, everybody get one on Molokai. Behind every truck, um, seat get one. What do you use that for? Protect your aina, your family, and go get food. So we shoot deer, and you shoot boats who stay over there are cranking. You know, and that's been up until now, but that days of ignorance is done too, right? We get to them before. We show them love, teach the kids. Everybody help out. Kokua as if can, and just the kind. You know, spread the word that kapu, hey, we're going to rest our en environment from dummies. <laughs> Mahalo nui. So I'd like to open right now to any questions that people have that would like to ask anybody in particular. Oh, you got the mic? Oh, okay, right on. Oh, perfect. Okay. Is there any questions? So uh, any questions? Oh, okay. Right there. We got 20 minutes to talk. Oh, just a Ladies, is it working? Okay. The thought you bring up about protecting the places that's, um, that needs protection, which is the ocean shoreline all the way out for all islands. What do you think of the idea of a committee with brothers that can be sent out in teams, maybe two, three, with a Malama brother t-shirt, and if someone in the community has had a class training on how to monitor fishermen, divers, and if somebody sees something funny, kind call up uncle, he come down and uh, talk story, you know. And then some kind of uh, deterrent if they if they break in the law. Check. Check. Yeah, you good. You good. The Ahakiole. Akupuna from Molokai proposed to the Department of Land and Natural Resources a better way for managed resources. It was Ahupua based. On Molokai, there was no ali'i. 
there was a kiole or a council of experts. Um, now, trying to bring it back, um, I sit on the Aha Kiole on Molokai. Uh, every Ahupu Ahagewan representative on Konohiki, um, every um, uh, Moku uh, district get one representative to the island, and the island get one representative to the, I don't like to say state, I don't say that kind of stuff, kingdom. Mm. So this practice of trying to solve your issue within your Ahupu A, within your district, within your island, and then if no can, to the, the bigger, broader place. But the wheels was greased and had some doodle kind lady up high in, in office. And she was going Nayalpuni, she was going Kawinoa, she was going everything we never liked. Yep. And I'm not going to mention her by name, but it was kind of duru. <laughs> so the get one process and get one vehicle that we can use, but we haven't been practicing. And the last time it's been used correctly was before anybody can remember. Hmm. Right? So now when you look, okay, uh, are you qualified to sit as a... Uh, a council member uh, uh, on the council of experts. They look, oh, but they didn't learn Western management the re and the reason why everything is gone is why the experts at. Oh, they kind of sit on the table. I mean, we got to get away from these bad ideas. We got to get away from these practices that no make I know better. Mm -hmm. So right now, nobody believe. I trying for Pai Pai, my generation, for come on board. We have a chance. The LNR recognizes it. Everybody stayed playing softball, right? Everybody stayed at the bar. Uh, who stayed at the meetings? Uh, no more too much, you know? So it's about doing it as a collective. And again, I have lost faith in my generation and older for have get united. Not in their ike on what they've done for us, but in getting united. We got to win the next three generations because this mindset is the exception. This needs to be the new norm, you know? So I don't know if we're going to be able to fix our problems in our lifetime, but we can try to get it back Pono faster, aiming for the, for the keiki and the kind, teaching them Pono practice. Mahalo. I want to I wanna also bring uh, Keala to talk story about the Konohiki practice that you guys are doing in Kauai. Mahalo for that question, too. It was really my ka'i to hear about um, how to move forward, because so often we think about the heva that has been done to us. Um, so in Wainiha, uh, I have the privilege of um, being with Ka'imi Hermosura, who is the konohiki of Wainiha. Um, we are trying to return to this uh, land stewardship um, mindset and framework that is so clearly laid out for us. We just have to ho'i kapiko, go back to the source. Nana ike kumu. Um, so in our practices, uh, it's really wonderful to have someone who sees from mountain to ocean how the water flows and how it's been diverted and how that affects the kalo. And really seeing it in practice shows me that this is how we have to return. Um, this is what we need to rally behind to really get back to a, a land stewardship um, working body working kino um, for us to thrive and, and have aloha aina be not just, you know, the uh, rest of the non-seven people. It has to be everybody, you know, everyone working as a collective to make it happen. Just because there's a konohiki there doesn't mean that the kino is going to work. We need the maka ainana who are going to take care of these lo'ikalo and the lavaia who are going to go into the, and, and malama, these local ia. We need every part of the kino to be working in order for us to move forward. So I have had the privilege of seeing that this does work. I've been told I'm in the Y generation uh, as a millennial. Um, and... For me, it's been interesting to ask why in a society that generally tells us that's the way it is. So I'm very fortunate to have to have that ike because we see that this society is not working. It's not working for any of our people. We're all we're all starving on our own land. We're all houseless without you know without houses in our home. So. 
um, yeah, working as the collective, um, and I think I think uh, Palala said it very very well. Um, we have to work together and and bring it back. So I wanna um, before we go into. Um, uh, I want to put this remind, mem reminder to always put it into the context of the fact that, yes, we have a culture of sustainability. We have the science. We have the fully interconnected connection with the Ike Kupuna. And this was stolen from us forcefully, violently, brutally taken from us. So having that aloha for each other to restore it, to be patient, not just with ourselves, but our kupuna, our brothers and sisters, our cousins and ourselves to forgive ourselves, but then move forward, right? To reclaim what was stolen, to not be ashamed of the fact that this was taken and stolen from us brutally, but at the same time, to hold ourselves accountable for the fact that we not need to kue and kukulu. So the majority of the time, we must care for malama and research and not allow them to take from us anymore, to bring it back and to practice it every day. And then there's the resistance afterwards. But when you have to, when you plant the seed, you have to be ready to defend it. I also want to have um, to ask uh, Twinkle, how are you guys bringing back this traditional uh, practice in Pu'uhonua? What you mean? So the, how are you steward, how are you um, regulating uh, the stewardship? How are you encouraging, teaching people how to malama the land um, in this space of refuge that, you've, that you have uh, created for your peoples? I know that you're growing uh, food for your community. I know that you're watching out to make sure that people don't. And that's a lot of people from outside of your community who are bringing in lepo and then also blaming it upon the community. And this is something that happens a lot with home, houseless folks, right? They bring in Opala, and then the state then criminalizes the houseless again when it's not their Opala. They're actually, they're actually Maka'ala, yeah? So we do have a lot of people that come into our community. Um, dump their bad name cards. Cards there's, um, we go out, find us donators who will take the cards up for us. You know, and if I got to pay them, I'll pay it. You know, because a lot of the times, um, we are the ones that are, is being blamed. Um, a lot of the people that we, I start from the bottom, a lot of them need to learn from the bottom, work your way up. Um, first of all, you need to learn to love the land, love where you live, you know, respect where you live. She gave us a beautiful place, love her. Um, even for my kikis, my kikis, you find a lot of them scolding the adults in our neighbor, in our village. You know, you know you're not supposed to be doing this. Go pick up your rubbish. You know, I mean, I start cracking. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you, you know. And they'd be like, Auntie, they make me sick. <laughs> but that's my kids, yeah. you know. Um, you do something wrong in that village, my little ones will come. It's not my big ones. It's my little ones. Um, for us, let me tell you what. It's not easy going to sleep with a clear mind. I don't know about the rest of them in the village. Me, I always think about what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, Because tomorrow ain't promised to us. The way the state works and everything ain't promised to us. You know, we've been seeing sweeps being done by them daily on a weekly basis at different time of the nights, which to me they're just being bullies. You know, one day that will happen to us. You know, I am looking for a land. I am asking DHHL and DLNR for help, you know. We'll see where it takes us. Yeah. So we think we have only time for two more questions. So do we have another question? Because, um, you know, the state, it's no surprise, you know, that they're not supporting what you folks want to do because that's, they're not like that. And the federal government, never mind, you know. So, so I mean... Sovereignty is a long road, but I'm just wondering like where it stands within the context of, of, of all these activities and such. Um, check. Um, there's an interesting question. Um, I, I was fielded at, at the fish farm. Our respected auntie um, was talking about the same thing, about the, the issues and the pilikia, and I threw at her, is, how come the kingdom is not one of your options? 
And she said, get too much kings and queens. And I said, oh, but not in our generation. I said, hoka. And, and I never mean for sting them like that. I just, I just very blunt at commentary. And, and it would seem so automatic, but we all learning, eh? Like, um, Kihei and Haleha came to Molokai, he was watching Uncle Walt, Kalaniwa, his son, and Kaloku, his grandson. And then Kihei said, oh, one of his um, teachers told him, one generation's knowledge, like what my, gra my grandpa told my mom, one of his seven kids, you got to go check into the kingdom. But he never tell any of the other kids. Mom took me when I was eight years old, and I was one of the only kids at the Ohana Council meetings. And so one generation's knowledge of finding them becomes the next generation's wisdom. I know. That generation's wisdom becomes the next generation's being. So my baby, she don't know that we stay in America. <laughs> she, this is the Hawaiian kingdom. She bilingual. Daddy not. She is. But she don't know that this is not the Hawaiian kingdom. So again, you can kind of see your recovery as your ohana and where you stay by your knowledge, your wisdom, and being. Hello, ho, ho. Um, I get asked that a lot, that question, very question you asked. Um, and for me, I think that we're all super creative individuals here, all of us. We all have our own ike, we all have our own experiences, and we all have ways that we're gonna move forward. I don't think sovereignty entails throwing people off their land, throwing people out of their houses, and saying this is ours and it should be this. I think that moving forward, we need to find a way to work together for us all to achieve a common goal, which is to be able to eat without starving, to be able to drink clean water, you know, without having to go days without it. All of these things are what sovereignty means, right? To govern yourself. And that means your food. That means what you want to do, where you want to work, all of these things. But they're not confined to the box that we've been given by society. It doesn't have to be go to your nine to five job in order to make the money to afford the food that you want to eat. We can cut that out and we can go straight to the aina. That, that's what we've been doing for so long and we kind of got distracted by that. Moving forward though, you know, there are there are buildings that are on this aina already. There are people who have houses and um, I, again, I don't think we should throw them out. So I think it's all about being creative in how we're going to move forward. We have iPhone. Well, most of us have iPhones or smartphones. How are we going to use those as tools to move forward instead of, you know, spending all of our days utilizing them for an entertainment that takes us out of that bubble? Um, Personally, I have my own ideas about it. I think everyone could work in good faith. Maybe discover what type of aina you might be living on and say, you know what? I'm working in good faith with the Hawaiian kingdom. If anyone wants to have lo'i on my aina, by all means, teach me. Allow me to make lo'i on my aina. So just coming up with new ways, not shunning everyone else in their ideas. Aole pau ka ike, ikahala ho'okahi, not... One idea comes from one place. Did you I, have a follow-up? I, I, I put in my application for um, head of immigration, though, when the kingdom huli. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my idea about throwing people off land or, or just like reestablishing a completely different thing. There are a lot of um, places, Canada included, um, that are repatriating, you know, land that is presently being lived on. It's, you know, I, sovereignty really is a political, legal aspect. It's not, it's like the things that you're speaking about are cultural and in the Hawaiian, you know, way of thinking in the Hawaiian kingdom, the political and the cultural are one. And in our present society, they're not. But I think that that's been a mistake, you know, because you have people being afraid, you know, of sovereignty because they think that's going to be that, you know, that everything's going to go to like, you know, 1893 and, you know, I, I, I wasn't my question, my question was just a question of sovereignty because, you know, if, if we can create something that's more equitable, you know, I, I know think, then um, 
being then at that's um, what we have. being in Den Haag yeah. and being at the um, Lance Larson trial, um, judgment was rendered, and like we try to push in all these different venues and different ways, but pretty much the only way we can go home to the kingdom is all together. Mm -hmm. right. Keanu cannot go home by himself. Uh, Walter cannot go home by himself. Yeah. Um, Uncle Henry cannot go by ho home by himself. Uh, Uncle Bumpy, nobody can go home by themselves. We all got to go home together. So sometimes I think instead of, that's why I tell my mom, mom, do what you guys doing. Pump, pump. We're going to try to go use music, art, poetry for go grab the rest of yeah. La Lahui yeah. and go yeah. bring them up to speed with you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and we all go together. Yeah. You know, no stop what you guys doing. Pump, Canada, Switzerland, whatever. But we, uh, we got to go grab the rest of our La Lahui. Of the group, I know. I'm sorry. I just wanted to finish this thought, though, is that there are different ways of thinking about using the land as the you know traditional way, and people are going back to that. They're rethinking things, and it doesn't involve moving people around. It doesn't involve being horribly disruptive, yeah. you know. And in fact, that wouldn't even be in the proper spirit of of Aloha Aina anyway, because mm. that would create some kind of really major chaos. So I just am saying that. I'm just saying that in the background of all these concerns, you know, these day-to-day -day concerns and these, you know, wonderful, you know, going back to the past and creating the Ahokuaha system and really using that, there is still the question of our legal sovereign status and that if we could be our own nation mm. on a larger scale, then I think some of these yeah, things would also oh, yeah. fall into place. It's, it's like two, two hands holding each other, the cultural and the political. Ayo, and I'd like to point out that this is this panel was convened because they unite the national international perspective with local in action of sovereignty. So I totally hear what you're saying, not going to kick people out, We're talking about what is our national status as a kingdom. So we have people who are working with, on an international level, folks that are talking story. We're all working together. And when we talk about the Kino, Aha Lohaina, we re respect the fact that the whole body, the, uh, if you look at the Kino Kalai Moku, David Amalo, the oldest um, description of traditional governance, you have the Kalai Moku, which are the governance people, the left hand. The right hand is the kahuna, the experts who are the ones who the ones learned in the most secret arts. The right foot was the Nakoa, the what was the warriors, the people who protected everybody else. The left foot with the Mahiai and Lavaia. And then you had the Manuvai that connected everybody and wove all the stories and, and were put together as one. So when you talk about us removing the chains off our brains, the Kalaimu, all of that is all one body. We are all one. So the national status, as we walk forward, we're going to walk right foot, left foot, right arm, everybody together marching as one. We forgot how to, they fractured the body of our kino. So those parts are not working together. So this is, this discussion, I invite everybody to talk more with folks because they are knitting the body, the fabric of that kino together in on a variety of different ways. Ahakiole, the konohiki, the sanctuary. And this is just one aspect of yeah. it, which is the food sovereignty. Mahalo, aloha, aina. The kuleana is on us to make the pono so ono yeah. that you cannot resist. You just can't stop. You, you just cannot, can't stop. You cannot I want a big hand, everybody. I want a big hand. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's give a big hand for this guy. Come on now. Food security. Criminalization of culture. I want to mahalo Dr. Kalama Nihu. I want to mahalo Kiala Lopez. I want to mahalo Auntie Twinkle Burgess. I want to mahalo Hano Hano Naehu. Um, I mahalo you guys. We got a great panel. We had a great panel. So let's get a round of applause. Huh? Mahalo, you guys. I encourage I encourage the panel to go over there to a uh, uh, brother um, uh, Keone. Brother Keone got some alva right there. Um, sticking out. Now, how about Are that? Are we going huh? up on stage pretty soon too? I don't know, but I was just telling guys the butterf the caterpillar went turn into the butterfly. Ooh. And watch this butterfly fly. If you don't know, if this is the first time you, you ever met Hano Hano, go to the main stage and go get more of him. Because that bugger, like you say, he's Ono. But how about a big hand for all of that big group right there? So I want to thank you guys here. I want to thank you guys. Everybody stand up. Let's take a few minutes to stretch out here because we got a great panel coming up on our panel number two starting about four minutes. So take some time. Take some air. What is it? Yeah. Oh, hold, hold up. We got the next panel that's coming up. We got a great panel. Women Voices. Um, we, got, we got it uh, led by Kim Kampak. 
uh, uh, Auntie Terry, uh, okay, uh, uh, Joy and the Moto. Um, we've got Lisa Grandinetti. Uh, these are our Mana Wahine, our allies who went to Okinawa, and they're going to give us a report back on that. And that's starting in about three minutes. So I just want to use this time here in the discussion tent. My name is Joshua Nonga. I'm from Haula. Um, I, I, I have a, a, I'm the owner of Cool Coal Consulting. Part of that is put a plug on that there. Cool Coal Consulting. We do uh, engage, empower, and elevate our community capacity building. We do meeting facilitation. If you're a small group, you have some issue-based campaign planning, uh, some help you want to do that, uh, please uh, give me a call. I have some of my, uh, my cards here. But we have some, I have some mahalos. First off, I want to mahalo the, the organizers of La Hoi Hoi Ea who've been doing this for the last 30 years. Let's give them a hand. You guys don't know, starting off with Papa Kikuni Blaisdell, doctor, uh, one, of our, one of our leaders, one of our grandfathers of Aloha Aina. Rest in peace, Uncle Kikuni. I um, want to mahalo. Uh, first off, I want to mahalo some of our volunteers. I want to mahalo Brother Oren, who's doing sound. Brother Oren, who's doing Olelo right now. Let's give a hand for Brother Oren. I want to give a hand for our Kia'i. All of our Kia'i, uh, our Kia'i are wearing red bib ribbons. And our Hawaiian Kingdom uh, security, you see them around here. Um, the idea of political independence starts with us, the, with the ability to feed ourselves, ability to police, uh, to, to ourselves accountable. So that's what we're doing, right? Um, I don't want to make some space up, up for community announcements. Um, so throughout our panels, we definitely have um, opportunities for, for you to come up. Just tap me on the shoulder if you want to make an announcement in between. So if you are part of the Women Voices, come up right now. Come get to the panel. Come check us out. I want to mahalo our Kia'i. You'll see our Kia'i wearing red ribbons on their left, on their left arm. Um, our Kia'i are spaced out throughout. Um, we have about six Kia'i that are CPI certified trained. I want to mahalo them. I want to mahalo Auntie Leilani Teo for doing a Kia'i training uh, for us. It's another great example of community empowerment, community engagement. Um, I want to mahalo uh, Hui Kulike Kako, Arohana from YNI. Every Sunday they have work day, sustain, uh, super sustainable Sundays, um, where they, they, the idea is that they're working up there at Ka'ala Farm. Hui Kaliki Kako, Great Ohana. I want to mahalo those guys. Um, I want to send a big mahalo to um, Brother Daniel Anthony, Hui Aloha Aina Momona, who helped um, do the emo up at Thomas Square. For all of our speakers, for our volunteers, and for some of you guys, if we get extra mayai, we got some food from the emu. I want to mahalo you guys there, so please go up and get some. Um, you'll start to see when everybody with the red ribbons is eating, that's the time to go. Okay, so we got about a minute to go here with Women's Voices. So if you're part of Women's Voices, come on now. Let's get in here. We're about to get going. Um, I'm like speaking this way, but the speaker's all over here, yeah? Portuguese, yeah? Portuguese, that guy. Um, oh, I want to make another mahalo to uh, Brother Pete Doctor, a great ally, great friend of ours for allowing us to use his sound system. Mahalo, Brother Pete Doctor. Mahalo, uh, Olelo Media. Now, if you are somebody who is uh, Facebook Live, we want to encourage that, please use the hashtag LHE2017. That's hashtag LHE2017. 